The Real People Multi Game Solitaire Mega Tournament is here for you. We're doing seven by seven ages. Thought I'd just take a quick look at the the geo, the the world situation before we get started and play. Um, interesting stuff here. So we have flush and giraffe, and I don't think I made note of this last time. Are um, in conflict in two different areas, both uh, over Spain, Spain Portugal area, and over India. Um, one thing I neglected to do last time was deal with Flush's Christianity, his well, his Syracusan's Christianity. Though Flush himself is also a Christian, I think there are um, signs on his card uh, to that effect. Um, but so I dealt with that. They got to immediately convert this area. He could have also disordered this area instead. He decided to take Portugal. Um, given that uh, the Christianity, you know, I always have to assume that the players are aware of information like that. So Giraffe actually adopted Christianity. That's actually really helpful to Melky because Melky can now adopt it on this turn if he likes, which I'm sure he does because he's going to score some points um, if he's the largest Christian empire. Of course he's not going to be. He's going to be the third largest, right? Because uh, we already have three. We have the Romans, um, the Syracusans, and then, the, and then now the Irish likely this turn. He he did choose a civilized action. Um, and, you know, that's that's going to be tough because the Christianity is such in this game that it it tends to spread. Um, it's, it disincentivizes not joining because if you don't join, whoever has Christianity can just disorder one of your areas as long as they're adjacent to you, I believe, or within range, I forget which, um, every turn. So that's really annoying to have a disordered area because you don't get money from that disordered area. Not the end of the world, but it can it can build up and cause some problems. So uh, it's interesting how they they make it likely that it will spread uh, through through those incentives and disincentives because you it also lets you take a, a, a neutral space. Um, you can also do that instead of disorder. So it's kind of nice. Um, so we have this kind of you know giraffe and cowboy giraffe towards the top or not cowboy, sorry, flush towards the bottom in conflict. That's pretty interesting. Um, we have Melky maybe starting to have a comeback. He does have a start empire down this turn. Uh, I've done some thinking about the science. Um, how I think I'd like to do science, because I, I, I don't know if you recall, but I said I was I was not happy with how the science cards were working. All, all The only thing they were really doing was if you had the most, you got to... You were the only one who got the free progress, and I'll still do that. But I, uh, sticking with my relative rule of thumb, how I'm making the, the culture cards work relative to each other, it's a lot easier to do it that way than to have flat results. Um, I think, so like if you're in combat with someone, you compare each of your symbols, right? And if you have more of these than the person, then you get a plus one on that, that combat result table. So that's another way we can, we're kind of killing two birds with one stone. That's another way we can move up and down this table here through that. Um, and same with trading. I think you get a trade bonus for every symbol that you have uh, more than the other person. That'd be a fun way to do it. And then there'll also be advantages for leaders. Um, and I had those written down here. To, yeah, so if you have more gears than someone you have an advantage in tactical combat. Um, if you have more tablets, respectability. I don't I don't like that. I don't know. I might change that because I don't know. Yeah, so we'll ignore that one. But the most compass and squares, um, it makes it so it's easier to... Yeah, see, that doesn't work. That's a flat most. I, I'd rather have it relative to two people. So we'll keep the first one. Um, and then I might change the other ones uh, when we get to that point. No need to cross that bridge until we come to it. So we have a big bridge to cross. We have a big turn ahead of us. Let's get started. Melky chose the Arabs over the Swedes. They're led by William Wallace, um, who is actually the Prophet Muhammad. Um, and they're showing up right here. I'm not even going to roll for it. They're just taking this guy out. The difference is just so huge. They also get to have two maneuvers before uh, anything else happens. So I have to decide where they're going to move, whether or not they're going to try and attack Cowboy here. Probably beat him, right? But um, Or they can also fill up the desert. They're, they're one of the, the, the um, empires that can score 
and produce from the desert. So it might not be the worst thing in the world for uh, them to, to spread into the Arabian Peninsula. So Melki's Arabians have spread down into Arabia, uh, and they're all, he also decided to strike Mesopotamia. That's worth five bucks during production phases. It's a nice, it's one of the sweet spots on the map. Another area over here that Cowboy has is the Great Plains. So this is going to be in contention. Um, he thought about striking Palestine, decided didn't want to be involved in this runt, this runt clamp. So he's trying to kind of scoot around it here, give himself an opening out, and hopefully get some some good good um, resources from that, because although he can take resources from the desert, it's not as much as the fertile lands of Mesopotamia. So, um, how this normally this would have been a three to one pretty easy battle for him. Cowboy's playing this card Charge, which is going to let him double his um, his cavalry. I don't know why they don't normally decide to charge, but apparently usually they don't charge. I don't know what they're doing. Um, so that's going to take it to a three to two uh, as opposed to a three to one, right? Yeah, three to one, three to two. Yep. Um, so in terms of our bonuses and penalties to the die roll, it's actually going to zero out. Normally it would be a minus two because of the fort, which is in Cowboy's favor there. But we're going to add two. One because there's a leader, and another one because it's William Wallace. This is a rare case where the um, Duel of Ages card is actually going to impact the strategic battle because of his power has to do with inspiring others and whatnot. So it makes sense that he would add one to the die roll, um, even though his Seven Ages chit doesn't have any stra st uh, st strategist tactic. Oh, and I also I forgot. Yeah, he's going to have the scientific advantage. But this is our new rule, so he's going to have an additional minus three to that. So this is not so good for Milky as it was looking. So it's going to be 3 to 2 minus 3 on the die roll. Um, one advantage Milky does have is he has more units. So we'll see what we get. Blup. 1. That's a terrible roll. So E. That means the entire force is eliminated. Oh my gosh. And then a quarter. Those These lone horsemen, these lone cowboys perhaps, have defeated the entire Arabian force. That was unexpected. Very unexpected. Wow. Wow, that's really, really hard on Melky. So I forgot to figure in um, the fact that they have an elite marker. That would have been another plus one to uh, Melky's role there. That that He still loses all his forces, but that's going to make it for half half of what the what he lost. Cowboy's going to lose. We're going to round that up. So Cowboy does lose this horse. Um, pretty pretty gallant, uh, pretty gallant of them to uh, charge out of the fort there, and um, risk their lives and lose their lives in order to protect this wheat field. Um, now Muhammad has the wheat field to himself. So Cowboy just produced. He got a lot of money thanks to heavy taxes. Um, however, he's really constricted by the amount of land territory controls. He hasn't done a very good job of civilizing his uh, plains. You know, he doesn't have a lot of cities there. So he's not able to, um, he's not able to bring in as many armies as he can afford. If he had been, you know, that, that one minus one because of the, or that one plus one because of the, um, what do you call it, the marker, elite marker, really made a big difference there. If he had been able to keep Mesopotamia, he would have gotten 10 more bucks because he doubled his money, and then also he would have had another space that he could have produced units. So, you know, he's got the money, he's got, you know, some decent units, but he doesn't have enough. It's going to be really hard for him to expand back out. Uh, tough position, tough position. A couple of interesting items known after production and trade in progress. We're about to start maneuver, but I thought it should check in beforehand. Um, one, we got a big troop buildup on both sides between Flush and Giraffe here in India. That's going to be interesting. They're both all in. They're both going for it. I can't, I couldn't tell you who has the advantage at this point. Um, we saw Giraffe. She used a Vizier to, to pick up that heavy taxes card. Uh, again, so she also has disorder in her capital. 
uh, just like cowboy down here. What else happened? Um, a lot of trading done with Runt. So Runt shot ahead, Runt's Amazons. Um, when they get here, one of these guys, pro probably one of these two, we're going to have to say goodbye to. So she moved up three spaces in this turn, wasn't it? Was she right here? Yeah, one, two, three. So it might be like two more turns if, if it keeps up at that le at, at that rate. You know, it could always go faster. Um, I think people are starting to see that, hey, that could be a strategy. You know, you can, you can get people eliminated by just pushing someone ahead to that point. Um, so that's pretty much what's going on. Um, Flush has maneuvered with his Syracusians. Didn't have a lot of a lot of spare units to maneuver, but he made good work with the ones he did. He got a boat out there, a boat out there. That's going to move him towards getting the sea dominance he needs. Let's see, he's got three now. He's probably going to score on it this turn. Uh, yep, because he's tied for three with Runt. Oh, but Runt has a... Her Amazons have a philosopher, so that's he's still in, he's in second place. But he's going to have at least get a point off of that, which is going to be helpful. Maybe break his deadlock with Little Red, and he also sent the Runyon into um, Castile here, and did a little sabotage on the Romans. Got rid of their Gamers Guild. Um, here we see the importance of those red shields. She had no defense against it. He, he's not even very intelligent, this Ron, and even though he's an administrator, or maybe because he's an administrator, and still was able to do away with that. That's going to, um, you know, that, 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 that decreases a good deal her her wreath potential. She's only going to get one per three coins instead of two per three coins. Um, everyone gets one per three coins. And the turn ends with some interesting things in terms of our final two players, our players who are lowest in score. First Little Red had a rather fruitful, um, a fruitful civilized phase. He got three artifacts in play, a Colossus, Temple of Diana, and a Just Ruler. Um, he also got Kiri Silvertip. She in this in this incarnation is a builder and an explorer, which is nice because that allowed him to build an extra city. He really needs to be able to make some money uh, in order to do well here and he's kind of shut in he doesn't really want to stick his neck out here on the other side of the the two who are kind of struggling for their life right now flush um flush just dis discarded the chit in they weren't going to score many more points didn't look like because you know, they still had the majority in Asia, but that was getting countered by the fact that they no longer had their homeland. And it would have been really hard for them to take it back, you know, at the bottom of the progress track like this. And so he left. You know, he might be able to come back a lot stronger next time. We'll see. Um, so that's what's going on here. I will go ahead and update the points, but I'll show you where things are at. Little Red pulled ahead of Flush. He was one behind him for quite a while. He got three points off of those artifacts, so there he is there. Alright, so the pattern for scoring has definitely changed this turn. One, Runt has pulled way out ahead of Giraffe. She pulled in 10 that turn. Giraffe actually went down. She no longer has the progress lead, which was worth two points for her. She got no points off that this turn, so she made uh, a good bit less. That that changed things for her. Um, Melky, he's starting to score more now. The Irish are pulling in one extra because of their Christianity, and then the Arabs uh, were also able to score a point. And I think that's it. Uh, but he's scoring five instead of, I think he was scoring three or something like that. Little Red still only scoring two. Flush is scoring three, so, you know, their their roles are kind of reversed for this turn, but it looks like, you know, if, if they keep their scoring that they have right now, Flush is going to be able to pull ahead on the next turn. And, you know, every turn counts now. We're getting down to the wire. It's going to be very, very dangerous uh, for one of them. Next time on the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament, 7x7 seven seven ages. Whew.